Helpful for life. One thing about plating is that it's a great opportunity to get creative. If you don't believe me, think about a parent trying to get their kid to eat something. There is a good chance that they organized the food in a way to make it look like a smile. Or maybe they just took the entire plate and turned it into an airplane and flew it around with whooshing sound to try and get their kid interested. Obviously, I'm not telling you to turn your food into airplanes, but I am telling you to get a little more creative with your food. Low key though, if you invite me over for dinner and you fly food at me like an airplane, I'll be happy. Anyways, the bottom line is that most meals that people eat on the average day are plated very plainly. So why not step it up a little bit and heighten the experience? After all, some people like to say that you eat with your eyes first. And I'm not saying that you should care what other people think, but I'm not gonna lie to you when I say that it can feel good when you see somebody taking a picture of your food. Again, these are just gonna be some general tips to get you started, but if you're itching for more inspiration, we live in the right time. We're in the day of Instagram and Pinterest and sexy food ads, so just go online to find some inspiration. Also, by the way, there are some people whose entire job it is to make food look good. They're called food stylists. And I'm not pulling your leg on this one. You can go online and search food porn and type it in exactly like that, food porn, not porn with food. Unless that's what you're looking for, of course. Back to the subject at hand though. With plating, here are the things you wanna keep in mind. Good plating will make the food look pretty, make it interesting, and help the different aspects of the plate balance each other out. Another word you're gonna hear a lot is vary. And that's because a good variety of food and presentation makes for a more pleasing meal. And the variety can help balance each other out. First, let's talk about the plate itself. Use the right size plate and don't overload the plate. Use a small plate if you're serving a little and use a big plate if you're serving a lot. And if you have to err on serving too little or too much, always serve too little. Not only will it look better, but your waistline will thank you and too big of portions can actually be unappetizing. And if somebody wants more, they can always go back for seconds or thirds. When serving the plate, rotate it so that the most interesting or the best part is facing the diner. Don't make me reach over veggies to get to my ribeye. You know what I mean? The last tip, and this one's a little extra, but the diners would definitely notice, serve cold food on cold plates and hot food on hot plates. For cold plates, simply stick your plates in the refrigerator while you're cooking. Or if you forget, just throw them in the freezer for a few minutes right before you serve. For hot plates, there are five ways you can do it. The first one is if you were already using the oven. Just turn off the oven after you're done and then stick the plates in. That residual heat will warm them up in a matter of a few seconds or a few minutes. If you weren't already using the oven, you can turn it on to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and put the plates in for a few minutes. The second way is very simple. Just run the plates under some hot water right before you serve them. The main downside of this is that you'll have to dry them off, but if you use hot water, evaporation will help them dry pretty quickly. The third way requires a little bit of timing, but if you time it right, you could just take those plates straight out of the dishwasher right after the cycle finishes, and they'll be nice and warm. Some dishwashers even have a heated dry cycle where you can run just that to heat up your plates. Even fancier dishwashers have what they call a plate warming mode. The fourth way is to just microwave your plates. This may not be very effective depending on the type of plates you have, but you should try it out. Just make sure that when you're microwaving it, add a small cup of water in there or it could damage your microwave. If you wanna know a little more and maybe why it could damage your microwave, check out this video. And of course, you can buy an appliance specifically for plate warming. If you've got a thousand bucks and you're doing a kitchen renovation, you can get an appliance just for that. Or if you just wanna spend $75, go on Amazon and look for a plate warming pad. Some safety notes for you. Use pot holders when you're grabbing the plate so you don't burn yourself and make sure that your plates are microwave, dishwasher, or oven safe before you use any of those methods. Next, let's talk about placement and organization on the plate. The first tip is to leave things off of the rim. Generally, it looks better if you don't have anything on the raised portion of the plate, and especially make sure you don't have anything dangling off the side. If you have something that you want to highlight, put it in the center of the plate. Or if you wanna be a little funky, you can intentionally off-center everything that you put on the plate. Now with regards to spacing, sometimes you have things that you wanna be next to each other, touching each other, maybe stacked or leaning on each other. But if you don't wanna do that, leave a little space in between your food. Not only will this look better, but those picky people who don't want their food touching will be thanking you. After placement, the next easiest way to amp up your plating game is by playing with the sauce. Have some fun with it. 
This may be something you've seen on TV or at a fancy restaurant, and it looks super fancy and complicated, but it's really simple to do. All it takes is a swipe of a spoon, a squeeze of a bottle, the wipe of a towel, or my favorite, a simple splat like you see here on screen. Check out this quick three minute video for some inspiration and go from there. Bonus tip for you, if you're serving something that is crispy, don't put sauce on top of it. Put it underneath it or put it off to the side. That way that crispy thing will stay crisp. And the last tip with sauce, if you have sauce or juice that goes somewhere you don't want on the plate, simply wipe it off with a towel. The next tip is to vary your shapes. If you're serving a round potato as one of your sides, maybe choose a vegetable that's not round to go with it. So instead of serving Brussels sprouts, maybe serve green beans instead. If you're gonna be serving asparagus spears, maybe cut those carrots into rounds instead of serving them long and spear-like. Cut your protein into strips if you're serving it with rounded mounds of sides. And if you're serving a casserole, maybe cut it into a triangle or a circle or a diamond or something besides that boring old square shape that you always get. The shape can also apply to your plates. Try using round and rectangular plates with different round and rectangular foods. Have some fun with it. Another good tip is to vary the height. You could use toothpicks to hold the food together as it gets taller. Think about a club sandwich, for example. Or you could use a stylish toothpick on top just for decoration. Or even fancier, you could use a sprig of herbs stabbed in top like a decorative flag. Stack or lean food on top of one another. Now, if you have something like mashed potatoes that you're serving, you can even use that as glue to hold multiple layers together to get higher and higher. Consider serving your protein sliced. You can then fan it out or lean it on top of one another or do whatever you want. Get creative with it. Use a food mold, also known as a food ring. If you don't have one of these, you can use a cookie cutter or simply a glass that you've turned upside down. I really like these things. I think it's super cool. I mean, take a look at this picture. Look at that and tell me you don't think it's awesome. These next three tips require you to plan before you cook, but they can make a really big difference. That is to use skewers, to contrast the textures, and to vary the colors. First, the skewers. When you serve the same food that you were going to anyways, but on skewers instead, not only does it look better just by itself, but you can also stack, lean, and arrange those skewers in interesting ways to make really cool plates. What about colors? Well, the more colors you have on your plate, the better it's probably gonna look. And you can also even try varying the color of your plate. White plates may make some foods look better, whereas a dark or a colored plate may make other foods look better. And better looking food leads to a better dining experience. Another way to utilize color to make your food look good is to show off that delicious caramelization and those sexy grill marks. Don't cover those up with sauce or any other food. Let that deliciousness shine, baby. But the most important factor about color when it comes to food is that nutrients within the food are often what determine the color of the food. So when you vary the colors of food on your plate, you're also including a wider variety of nutrients. Basically, the more colors you have, the more healthy it likely is. As for texture, let's name a few. You got soft, mushy, creamy, slimy, chewy, tender, hard, crunchy, crispy, firm, snappy, tough, rough, smooth, light, heavy, oily, greasy, fatty, fibrous, sticky, gummy, crumbly, dry, moist, juicy, melt in your mouth, mealy, thick, thin, now, that's not an exhaustive list of texture adjectives, but hopefully it was enough to give you an idea. Many people think that in an ideal meal, you use contrasting textures. Not only does this make it a little more interesting, but it helps the diner identify each part of the meal. As a bad example, think of a meal where everything is soft and squishy. It may start to seem like it's kind of like baby food, which is not ideal. Although my wife's grandfather does like to eat fruit baby food for dessert, he says it's really good. And he still has all of his teeth. So, <laughs> you do you. Here are a few good examples of how to vary the texture. A wet, ooey, gooey, slightly fatty, over easy egg on top of a slightly dry, crunchy piece of toast. Or a crispy yet tender chicken fried steak covered with white, 
creamy, delicious gravy served with a side of soft, mushy mashed potatoes. Which brings us to the last step of plating, garnish.